Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here and welcome back to the railway. Probably a slightly shorter video today, but I'm going to have another crack at improving that faulty B12 that I bought. Now at this point, is it worth it to keep fiddling about with this thing trying to improve it? No. No it isn't, but as it happens I have enjoyed tinkering with this loco and at the end of the day if I get a better engine out of it then I guess it will have been worth it. So just to catch you up on what's been happening so far, last time I took out the faulty motor from my B12 and I fitted instead one of these, these tiny little coreless motors. And to do that, I designed and then 3D printed a bracket to mount the motor into the locomotive. And this did work. The loco was able to run around the layout again. But because I had fitted such a small and puny motor with very low power to it, the loco struggled to crawl. It just wasn't a smooth crawler at the end of it all. And because the motor was such low power, it really wasn't running with much more torque than the faulty motor was. So it seemed like a lot of work for not much of an improvement. The, the engine pretty much behaved the same as it did with the faulty motor. So at the end of that video, I said, you know what, I'm going to keep looking. I'm going to see if I can find a better motor to fit into this loco and others that I decide to replace and see if that works any better. So I've been on eBay and I have picked up one of these. Now this is a slightly larger and more substantial coreless motor from the same seller, slightly more expensive as well, in fact considerably more so. I think the previous motor was like one or two pounds, 150, something like that. This thing is much more expensive. This thing cost me five pounds 27, but I'm hoping I will have gotten what I paid for in spending a bit more on this motor. Now taking a look at this motor, it seems quite familiar. Do you seem to recognize this? I sure do. It looks an awful lot like the coreless motors that Backman have started to use in some of their engines. The 812, the Precedent. Yeah, is it me or is this the same motor that they are using now? If so, that's fantastic news because those motors perform very well. This motor I haven't tried yet, so I'm hoping that if it does perform as well as those Backman motors, then it will be just the job for my B12. But of course, this is a larger motor than the one I used last time, so a new motor adapter will be needed. So I've made a modification to my old motor mounting design. The new bracket, as you can see, is a single piece, which is a lot simpler and it means also that I'm not having to use multiple screws. And because the diameter of this motor is larger, if I was to put like a top piece over that bracket uh, to hold the motor in place to stop it going upwards, then the whole assembly would be too tall to fit inside the B12 body. So instead, this bracket is designed to just clip onto the motor. The motor should be able to just snap down into that bracket with no top piece required. So that's a lot easier, isn't it? But does it work? I have no idea. Let's get it printing and let's see if it does. So off she goes, 3D printer is now getting started on my new bracket. The fact that this new bracket is a single piece isn't 100% better than before, because now of course it's all got to be printed in one go. And because no edge on this adapter is flat, I'm having to print it with supports. Supports are basically extra 3D printed material that literally supports the object you're building while it's being created. And then when the part is finished, you've got to pull off those supports with varying levels of difficulty. But we'll leave this to get on with its work now and I will see you once the part is finished and it's ready to have the motor installed. Okay, so here is the bracket in the physical realm now, and I've stripped off all of the support material. Quite an easy thing to do, to be honest. And now the only thing to do is to see whether the motor fits into the bracket. And as you can see, with a little bit of manoeuvring, yes, it does. And uh, that is so neat and tidy. It's really got it. You know, it's not going to go anywhere. So the only thing now is to see whether this thing is actually going to fit into the locomotive. So let's do the regular disassembly. The new motor that I've got, I believe, is a five pole motor, which is quite interesting. You never normally think of coreless motors as three or five pole. Um, normally, when a manufacturer describes a motor, it's three or five pole, and that is referring to a non coreless type or a coreless motor. And that's <laughs> it's just like its own type. Um, even I didn't really ever think of coreless motors as being three or five pole, but perhaps we should. Perhaps we should. Let's have a look inside then. Let's see my handiwork from last time and uh, proceed to strip it out. All right. 
So yeah, this, this last time's effort was much more complicated, wasn't it? That's for sure. Many more parts involved. It's got this top piece, which is screwed down. Um, assuming this new piece is at the right height and everything, this ought to be much, much easier to maintain and whatnot. Right, let's desolder the wiring. Right, so that's the old motor. I can get rid of that completely. And uh, I can also get rid of this old motor mounting bracket. Uh, keep the screws handy because I might need those. This old assembly used two, four, six screws. My new assembly with the better motor is going to use two screws. <laughs> and they are gonna hopefully be the two screws that the Hornby B12 originally used. So I think this is, this is gonna be much better, isn't it, actually? Uh, right, does the new bracket fit? It's actually based on the old bracket, so it should do. Right, let me try and screw this in place then. Yeah, the screws seem to be biting, so that's good. Right, new bracket is now in place. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Now I've got to look at getting the new, you know, this adapter thing that interfaces with the drive shaft of the Loco, that's got to go on the motor. So let's just check the distances here. Yeah, I think that ought to be good. So I'm gonna put this on as far as I can, and I'm gonna do this in the vise, assuming the vise is long enough. Okay, so I think that should be on there pretty good now, and the motor shafts don't appear to be bent or anything. <laughs> Everything seems to be rotating well, so that's good. So, can I seriously just snap this in and that will be that? Obviously, I've got to pay attention to the drive shaft. Yeah. <laughs> wow. The height looks right, doesn't it? You see this? Yeah, the height looks right. If anything, I think my adapter is quite tight, but I don't think it matters. I think I found that last time, actually, didn't I? And I didn't think to change it. But, no, it doesn't matter. It's, all, it's only got to rotate. Uh, right, are the wires going to be long enough to reach the motor? No, not really. So <laughs> I'm going to have to extend the wires a little bit. Oh, that's annoying. Right, apologies. I'll be back shortly. Okay, so I think we're done. Nice new wiring in, all insulated, and I've even took the wires up out of the way. I must say, it's not that much of a free spinning mechanism. I did notice this last time. <laughs> yeah, it does seem like there's quite a bit of resistance there. Maybe that's contributing to the failures, but I'm hoping that the new coreless motor will be powerful enough to overcome any such resistance. So let's see what happens. Let's get the body back on and I'll put some power to the wheels and see if we've got movement. Let's see whether it actually fits inside the body, shall we? That should be a, a pressing question. There we are. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to put the screws in. <laughs> it's a very bad idea, but I'll do it. I won't be so foolish as to put the front bogey on. <laughs> I'll wait until I've tested it before I do that. Uh, but now that the tender is connected, I should be able to put some power to the wheels and we'll see if the new motor is actually able to turn the wheels. That would be nice. Right, let's find out. Let's give it some power. Okay, we've got life. All right. Well, it's going. I mean, I'm not surprised that it's going because uh, everything looked okay. But how is the performance now? Let's get it onto the track. Bear in mind, it hasn't been running yet. Let's see if it's any better. Okay, so she is down onto the track. And this is gonna be quite a serious test now because I've never tried one of these motors. This will be the first time I've ever tried one in a project. And of course, they are a couple of times more expensive than the smaller coreless motors I was using before. So this is very important. I need to know whether it's actually worth buying these more expensive ones, whether they perform noticeably better than the smaller ones. I think they should, but uh, let's verify it. So does the loco work on track? Let's find out. Ah, damn, I've got, uh, yes it does, but I've got another engine on the track. <laughs> Let me go and take care of that. I said this was a serious test. I did not say it was a very scientific test. Right, let's prepare to go again. Okay, important test. Let's see if the loco works. Okay, yes, it does work. And of course, it hasn't been running yet, uh, which means it's basically a new motor. And I've got to say, 
It's looking pretty smooth, isn't it? Let's try it at 50% speed and run past, and we'll see whether it's uh, the right sort of speed. Let's see, 50%. Yeah, it's quite control actually, yeah, it's not too fast. I did wonder whether it would run along much too fast because uh, some of those Backman engines do, don't they? Uh, but no, this one seems all right. Uh, what sort of torque are we dealing with? Is it actually able to turn its wheels with my finger there? Yeah. Struggles a little bit at the lower speeds. If I turn it up, yeah, it seems all right. So I think, I mean, it's looking better. I think this is looking better than the old cordless motor. At the moment, not running. I'm still not convinced that it's better than the original motor in fully working order. Uh, certainly better than it uh, in faulty condition, as mine was. But uh, yeah, in order to find that out properly, I'm gonna have to run this in. So let's try a real smooth start. Oh, that wasn't very smooth. Let's try that again. <laughs> I think I've even seen it do smoother than that, and I wasn't trying for it. Let's try again. Turning up. So there's something still a bit funny here. Yeah, it's not really crawling at the moment. Something still a bit funny about the mechanism. I, I, I don't know if it's supposed to be as stiff as that. It was fairly stiff. I have to say, it seems to be running very, very smoothly and quietly now. I mean, you would not know that there was a different motor in there, would you? It's, it looks perfectly normal as it runs. And for the first time, it is now performing better than with the faulty motor. I think that's a bonus. I think with the old motor that I put in there, uh, it wasn't really much better than the faulty one because it was so weak. This one clearly has a little bit more grunt to it, doesn't it, I think. So I'll let this run for a little while. I'll run it in. I don't, I don't really have time to do the full run in, but I'll certainly let it run in for a good little while. And then I'll hook it up to some coaches and we'll see if it behaves a little bit better with a load. Okay, folks, I am back. And it definitely seems to be running a bit more freely now. Um, whether it's gonna be a better crawler though, I'm not sure. Let's have a look. Ooh, ooh, wow. So, I mean, this is not the, the kind of crawl that a fully working B12 uh, would offer. That is definitely still the case. Um, but this is better than it was. Oh, yeah. You know, that's perfectly acceptable. I would have said, I would have said that's acceptable now. Um, you know, it's much, much better than before. And, yeah, it's definitely got some grunt to it. So, yeah, look at this. This is almost back to normal now. The crawl is now acceptable, like I say. At the higher speeds... I almost can't tell the difference between this and my other fully working B12. Uh, is the torque any better now? I'll just turn it up uh, with my hand in front of it, or my finger, rather. Oh, yeah. That's at 50 now. Oh, yeah, look at that. It doesn't care. Right, so it's got a lot more torque to it now. Yes, yes, that is great. And it's smooth, it's smoothed down to the lower speeds. So something inside there has cracked uh, during that running in, and that is now much better. So let's go and couple up to some coaches. I've got um, five X LNER Teagues ready to go. And hopefully I'll be able to do a nice steady coupling this time. Oh, bit more, bit more. Yeah, that seemed pretty steady, didn't it? All right. So somehow, what? Well, the loco shouldn't be wheel slipping. Why was it wheel slipping? <laughs> That's nothing to do with the motor. It's only five coaches. Oh. Something isn't quite right with the front bogey. <laughs> yeah, I reckon I might have put that on wrong. Yeah, it shouldn't be slipping like that. Let's, uh, let's just try resetting it. Yeah, it was just um, some of the weight was being taken by the front bogey, I think. My fault, didn't put it back together properly. Okay, let's try again. Still felt a little light on its feet actually, but no, there we go, that's better. Right, that's at low speed, let's speed up. Oh, here we go. I think power might have been restored. This is at 50. Well, do you know what? 
Yes, it's not the amazing runner that it would have been brand new with a working motor, but compare that to this. <laughs> this is the footage from the original review, how it was running with a similar load, if I get now how many coaches, uh, but it looks kind of different on the original review, doesn't it? Not very much torque, not very much power there. Now it's looking much, much better. So it's imperfect, but it's a massive improvement. And yes, I think the uh, the slightly larger cordless motor is definitely worth, what, an extra two or three pounds? Yeah, it's definitely, definitely worth that. So there we go. That is a success. At long last, it's taken three videos, hasn't it? But at long last, the B12 is now working as I would expect it to work. It's not even slowing down around the curves anymore. So I think at long last, that is problem solved. A Backman, what I suspect, is the same as what Backman use. It's not a Backman branded motor, but effectively a Backman motor inside a Hornby Steam Loco. And it's running pretty good, got to be said. All right, folks, check this out. I noticed that my drive shaft adapter was a little bit too tight for the shaft, so I made a new one that was a little bit looser, and I've put that in, and now watch this crawl. Are you ready? Uh, talk about an improvement. So now, scratch everything I said about this not being quite as good as the original Hornby motor. Uh, it's now exactly as I would want it to be at all speeds, high speeds, low speeds, you know. This is just absolutely exactly the same as the original motor now, except obviously this one works. So now we are sorted. I am happy with this thing now. Uh, torque to spare, look at that. Doesn't care about coaches. Uh, it's perfectly good. This is perfectly good now. So that is a happy ending, isn't it? <laughs> Definitely as good as you could hope. And now it's got even more torque up the incline because uh, I've reduced the friction in the mechanism. So there you have it, folks. Now it is job done. All right. Cheers, everybody. I'll see you on the next one.